Welcome everyone, Simitar here, and now we'll start our journey through the promising Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales, an isometric narrative RPG with strategy elements and turn-based card battles. If you want to skip the game intro, jump exactly to 4th minute of the video. The year 1267. War hung in the air, it sent palpable. The mighty empire of Nilfgaard stood poised greedily eyeing the northern realms just across the Yaluga. In light of the threat, the realm sovereigns met in summit. They made declarations, pledged fraternal assistance, forged alliances, and then, in good spirits, dispersed. Among them, Meave, queen of the twin realms Lyria and Rivia. Know the name? Hmm? Heard her beauty extolled? <laughs> Justly so. Remarkable she was, not for her graceful exterior, but for her persistence and courage. Where was I? Ah, as the Queen and her retinue neared her capital, Count Caldwell appeared. In Meave's absence, the Count was to have helped her son, the youthful Prince Willem, run the Twin Kingdoms. Caldwell had clearly ridden hard. Drops of perspiration dangled from his whiskers, his neck red and chafed from a rough, starched stiff. Hail, your majesty. Delighted to see you in good health. The summit, it ended fruitfully, I hope? Yes, at its end, letters were exchanged, documents signed, paper. Time will tell of what value. That will suffice as cordialities go, Caldwell. Tell me what's happened, for I sincerely doubt sheer longing prompted you to ride out. Indeed, Your Grace. Another circumstance inspired me to do so. Um, the strays of Sparla, the bandits, I was attend to during Your Grace's absence. Uh, the situation's gotten out of hand, I fear. Steady, Caldwell. Come now. Deep breath. All right. Speak. What has happened? Be precise. As your grace ordained. I set out and was nipping at the bandits' tails for long. We pursued for weeks, until scouts returned, having sighted the strays' camp in the forest near Lockeran. We waited for nightfall, to surprise them as they slept. Alas, it proved a ruse. We found the tents empty. Straw stuffed dummies round the fire. Soon, we learned that as we waited for the sunset, the strays had snuck away, rounded our positions and ridden to Hawksburn. I beg your pardon, my lord. The tax collectors. That is where they station. So the gold? All of it? Uh, it's stolen. Your Grace, but I shall do all in my power to recover it. This I vow, if it be Your Grace's wish. After weeks in the saddle, Your Grace's wishes are modest. A hot bath and a night's sleep in her own bed. Yet, they shall have to wait. I must look personally to this matter. Your force, Coldwell, I will now command. You, send a herald to Hawksburn. They must prepare for the Queen's arrival. Air the rooms, dust off the porcelain. Make certain they do it. Do you see now, Reynard? I believe I foretold it would be thus. My son wasn't ready in the least to rule an entire country. I confess, Prince Willem has much to learn yet. Hmm, yes. And very little time. Most of the time you will be spending either or in battles or exploring the map. Movement on the map is pretty simple, just hold the left mouse button and navigate your cursor on the map to move your hero.
There are three types of resources, gold, wood and recruits. These three are spent on everything, expanding your camp, crafting new cards, uh, yeah, soldiers and dealing with in-game events. The system is pretty similar to how it looks in games like Heroes of Might and Magic. Resources are here and there on the map, marked with icons, and to pick them up you need to come close and hold the right mouse button. Stretched her over a fire till she told him where she buried her gold. Rather die than tell him she would, but I know where she kept it. Treasure maps are just one of many little sideways scenes of interest in the game. Try to find a place the maximum similar to one you see on the treasure map and some bonus loot will be yours. Resources are simply and roleplay-wise implemented into overall in-game process and events. Even in some non-combat small situations, you can make different choices, which results in spending different resources, hire workers or use your soldiers, and receiving different rewards, less wood but no gold expenses, or losing some gold hiring the workers but having more wood in return. Count Caldwell rode at the column's head, scanning its flanks with a wary eye that, despite his advanced age, proved very sharp indeed. Your Majesty! Bandits! There! At the tree line! The Count's footmen, unaccustomed to escorting their queen, sought to shield her with their bodies and assumed a tight formation to do so. They were promptly knocked aside as Meade charged headlong at the bandits, brandishing her blade and bellowing a ferocious cry. Attack! In the lower side of the screen before the battle, there are some icons. They are explaining the battle type and highlighting additional battle conditions, if those are present. The battle itself is pretty much classic to all card games. Different unit types, different rows to place them, and different abilities of both cards, your soldiers and commander, your hero, and of course turn-based combat. The one big difference from other popular card games, like Hearthstone or Elder Scrolls Legends, the units themselves, unless they have special active abilities called Order, 
are not directly, passively attacking each other. They can have special abilities to damage or debuff enemies, but do not have the common parameter of attack as in most of other card games. Here, to win, you need to have the bigger total strengths of your soldiers in the end of a round. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. To attack the queen, an outrage! Your Grace, the men await. You must lead to begin the attack. And don't forget you can always right click on the card or your or enemy hero or support items to see in-depth explanation of its abilities and strengths. I recommend to do this often if you are a beginner, because besides description of abilities themselves, developers also place description of abilities types and statuses as well. Salt of the earth they are, your grace. They'd follow you into fire. You need simply say the word. I shall teach you to respect the crown, you dogs! Give me a time. Think about Look out! Seek cover! We are bombarded! Time I taught you some respect! This half is... <laughs> the strays took tail and run! <laughs> yes! Our victory is assured! Sound the horns! May they sing praises of this triumph for ages! Battle's not yet done. It is better to conserve our strength. Prepare for a strike that will prove decisive.
Battle formation! Protect the Queen! My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. Ballista, your command. One of your teeth. I congratulate you on your latest victory, Your Grace. The bandit stood not a chance. <clears throat> Matters seem indeed to have gotten out of hand, to put it mildly. Meave said, arms crossed atop her shining breastplate. They've grown bold. Doubtless after the raid on the manor, the tax collectors... I've not heard of an ambush on the high road of foe. Caldwell explained, avoiding his liege's wrathful gaze. Enough, Caldwell. We must put things right. Come! The Queen's retinue set out, cavalry in front, infantry and arbalists close behind, and, following in the rear, the bandits, bound in chains. Ah, I do adore this prospect. Yes, Lyria, the Pearl of the North, with its hills and dales. Why, its beauty matched only by that of its queen. After three weeks in the saddle, I've my doubts, Count. We shall pitch camp here. Our soldiers need respite. A spell of it they deserve. One more scene I want to mention is that interface of deck building, cards crafting and sorting them and other features exactly here can be a bit overwhelming for a newcomer, but don't be afraid of this. It is not some sort of UI making flow from developers or something like that. It is pretty much the same for all card games. This type of interface is pretty much the same everywhere. So if you feel yourself a bit lost, don't become upset too fast. Just inspect each section bit by bit and you will notice that after a couple of hours you will navigate absolutely intuitively.
While often being classified as Gwent Remaster or Gwent Plus in the community, it's only partially true. Thronebreaker has Gwent card combat mechanics, yes, but besides that, it is a fully implemented RPG, with complex narration and companion talks and relationships based on your in-game choices and dialogue answers. Just with one more bonus, your relationships with your companions can affect them as cards in your army and even make them abandon you if you will ignore their quests or be too harsh with them, making you losing cards. In this way, RPG elements of the game are closely bided with the card game mechanics. A bit of respite, Reynard. Uh, yes. But if you've any new orders, Your Grace, I can be ready at any... At ease, Reynard. At ease. Don't you find it wearisome sitting alone? Wouldn't you prefer another's company? Swapping tales with the innkeep, even? Your concern, I most appreciate, Your Grace. But I prefer silence. Has it always been thus with you? Ever a man apart? Quite the contrary, Your Grace. As a youth, I gloried in company. Delighted in conversation. So what was it that changed you? That delight nearly cost me my head. But... Do you truly not know the tale, my lady? How I came to be your departed husband's aid? I don't. But would gladly hear it. I had but twenty winters behind me when I enlisted. Yet I was granted the rank of lieutenant from the start. Not by merit, but by birth. The respect of veteran officers, both my peers and seniors, that they could not grant. Nor did I deserve it. To earn that respect became my driving aim. And to seem wise beyond my years, I began spouting off about the King's decisions. This maneuver Reginald botched, that he failed to think through, and yet elsewhere he'd blundered like a schoolboy. Well, a brilliant strategist Reginald was not. They dubbed him the Courageous, not the Cunning, for good reason, I dare say. It was not long before I was clanking about in shackles. Another officer had reported me. I was charged with Les Majesty. The court-martial took but a quarter of an hour to deliver verdict and sentence. I was guilty of treason, and the noose awaited me. But Reginald first stayed the execution, then ordered that I repeat every word I'd uttered about his person or deeds. Soaked with sweat, my voice cracking, I did as he ordained. Reginald listened, raptly and silently. And when I'd finished, he declared I was right. He then appointed me his personal aid. A clever lad like you, I can always use at my side. Indeed. Though hardly sharp himself, wisdom in others Reginald both recognized and heeded. It was then I swore two things. Firstly, never again to wag my tongue like a fool. Secondly, never to betray his trust. And you never did. Know what he told me moments before he passed. Trust none of them, Meave, save Reynard. The old sod was right about that, at least. I thank you for sharing that tale, Reynard. Truly. Alas, I've come to fear a villain might simply not be cut out to be a king, let alone a good one. A harsh judgment, Your Grace. Let's not be hasty. The prince has but 16 summers to him. And is thus fully grown. The crown he should be able to bear at his age. Yet I left the land in his care for but a few months, and look what's become of it. Bandits roam and loot unchecked. We might yet learn of mitigating circumstances, events beyond his control. Would that it were so, Reynard. Would that it were so. Elsewise, we must hope Anseus will demonstrate more wit than his brother. Though I see little chance of that, either. It's time I attended to other matters.
there are plenty of upgrades in your camp. As I just said, because Stormbreaker is an RPG and not just a card game with a campaign mode, the upgrades are also very different. Some are directly affecting your troops, upgrades and power, some allowing you to wear more artifacts, and some are completely utility ones, like the upgrades that increase your movement speed on the map, simply saving your time. Is this what I pay taxes for? To be robbed along the high road? And in broad daylight, no less? Were it not for mandatory merchant routes and stacking rights, why I'd have gone round? Through Sodden. They told me, they told me. Lyria's a wild land, lawless, chaotic, a damn discreet. Morale is a simple size status of your army. It has three states. Positive buffs all your cards in combat on plus one point. Neutral does nothing and negative decreases strength of all your cards in a battle for one point. You can increase morale by praying on the shrines and choosing the dialogue lines event choices marked with a green triangle. But there is one detail here. Morale can be higher than just positive. So if it's already being green and you would say already prayed or chosen corresponding dialogue line, it realm. will not be increased further. So, Attack! if you see your morale is fine, it is wise to save some things like shrines for the future. Daylight. Raylan, what is this? Some spectre? A strigger? I can't be sure, Your Grace. It's the first I've seen of any such... thing. The cards you are able to use now in the middle are called Hand. There are also two groups of cards you don't see. One with emblem of the deck is the rest of your deck where cards are randomly added to your hand at the next round. The one with Skull is a graveyard, meaning all cards that were destroyed during the battle or played in previous rounds. These carrion eaters, I know them. Appeared on my estate last spring, enticed by the corpses of those of my sheep that fell. Harmless at first, until, that is, they fill their guts. Seemed to become quite powerful then. Be attentive, as some of the cards have abilities related with graveyard, so they can, uh, let's say, bring some soldiers back to life, or buff themselves, eating corpses and so on. Use such cards of yours wisely and try to destroy enemy cards that have graveyard synergy as set. Be 
obvious and they look true. But they bleed just as we do. Onward! Slay the filth! Abolista, your command. We routed the beast before they had a chance to gorge. Man. This doesn't bode well. Oh no, not well at all. I'm a one, sir. Curses. Strong as steers they've grown. And they show no fear. Frenzied, my lady. It's bloodlust. They lose all instinct to survive, feel no pain whatever witnessed this before. Your Majesty, we must give ground. Fall back. We can't win. Must minimize our losses. My Queen, there is no shame in seeding the field when fortunes turn sour. now. We shall not retreat. Arms at the ready. Attack! Look there! Yet another abomination. Ugh, that stench! My salts! Where are my salts?
Her Majesty knows what she's doing. The beasts hadn't a chance against us. Victory is ours. Many trees we felled, my lady. Might you have need of them? So? Take whatever your heart desired. They call themselves strays? Well, we'll treat them like strays. We build a bridge, brick by brick. A one, a two, the pillar grows thick. Good near no bandits here. Not surprising, neither, for we just... They call themselves... Masks they wear. Have you seen them? They fangs, snouts, horns, like a right proper nightmare. Your Majesty, I beg of you, thrash them bandits, please. Scared to step out into me own fields, I am. To raise an hand against the Queen. These owls hold nothing sacred. Thank you for listening to this tired bag of bones. Folk haven't lent an ear to old Poppy in a long while. Please take this for the road. My lady, the map. As you can see, the game is often rewarding you with small but pleasant bonuses when you are exploring the land and exhausting the dialogues with NPCs on maximum. So always try to do that. You will have both maximum immersion in the storyline and some rewards. Soon, Queen and retinue arrived at Hawksburn. The men stationed there they found standing at attention, baking under the blistering noonday sun. Your Majesty, Count Caldwell. Stand at ease, Sergeant. And report. The local peasants we've rounded up in the yard, Your Grace. Expect they might have lent the bandits aid. Yet our courtesy ain't inspired them. 
They haven't peaked a word. Might it please your grace to summon the hangman? He ties a noose for him, should have him jabbering right quick. I'll speak to them first. Your Majesty, for the Queen to question commoners, why, it's simply not proper. Whom for? I shan't be stripped of crown and titles for it, so no impediment do I see. Lead me to them. Bow low for your sovereign, Her Majesty, Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia. Have mercy, Your Grace. We bear no guilt, we simple folk. Calm your hearts, good folk. Though your queen I may be, you are subjects, not slaves. Meave extended a hand, the royal ring gleaming upon it. Unfamiliar with protocol, a pleb gripped it firmly and gave it a shake as hearty as a good scrub in the tub. My, we shall be addressing one another by name afore long. This is an outrage! Guards, grab him! I've all in hand, Caldwell. Forgive me, Your Grace. I'm not accustomed, no how. Nonsense. You've a firm grip, a spry handshake, and a bold spirit I can respect. What do they call you, man? Helmer. Son of Florence. Delighted, Helmer. Now understand me, man. I am in dire straits and in need of your aid. So please, answer my queries in full and forthrightly. The bandits. Whom do they follow? Him, my lady. We've seen him. No name, just an odd title. The Duke of Dogs, they call him. My. A blue blood thoroughbred mutt. Where are he and his hounds bound? Did he say? That recall, Imogen? What do you name? A Gleaton or something? Clayton. Lord Clayton. His estate lies to the south. Sound the horns. Have the men form up. We march at once. Milady! I've no eye for the Duke. He's a good man. Gave us proper brass for the welcome we gave him. Shared what grub he had. Shut it, louts. The Queen's had her say. Your Grace, your orders. What are we to do with them? Leave them be. The harvest draws close. Hard work. They'll have their hands full. Oh, my lady. Thanks be to you. Thanks be. I pray Mother Melita may watch over your kind heart. Pray she watches over yours. Should I hear of you sheltering bandits again, of you lying to my officers, I shall return and put torch to every hut, field and orchard. Understood. Meave set off toward Lord Clayton's estate at a gallop, her mum knocking the peasants aside as it kicked up a cloud of dust. The folk of Hawksburn spoke of the royal visit long after, albeit ever behind closed doors and in harsh tones. Thronebreaker has about 20 different endings, so you never know which even the smallest decision besides hiring or lowering your troop morale during your walkthrough may have an impact on the whole story. Enjoy! What is this, Reynard? Bandits attacking royal tax collectors. In broad daylight. They shall pay dearly, Your Grace. They shall indeed. And not only they. Rot.
That rumble. What is it? Look out! Rock slide! The wagon, we can use it as cover. Forward, we must move it forward. What now? You're far fewer than I presume. Summon your comrades, damn it. Chup chup, before I reach for my whip. Give me a time. The wagon! Who's the wagon now? <sighs> We've come through, Reynard. I thank you. The walls of the temple collapsed. The buttress is doubtless damaged by something. Or someone. There's nothing we can do here. We ride on. A peasant cart, loaded with a heap of hay, came rattling down the road from the opposite direction. Clear the road! bellowed Count Caldwell, standing in his stirrups. Make way for your queen! The peasants obediently turned their cart into the roadside nettles. As she passed, Meave glanced towards it and froze. Atop the hay bale lay a badly wounded man, gripped by fever. The thick, sweet stench of rot wafted from his bandaged legs. Gods, who did this to him? Meave asked. Bandits? Nay, nee, milady, replied the cartman. T'were a beast. Out to the east, down Wetterton Way, lies a boneyard, old as the elves, they say. The peasant continued. Cretum was set in snares round about there. Came running back to us. Drenched in blood, rattling on about a long-haired wench come climbing out a grave. Was taken into the good sisters of Melitale here on Bridge. Perhaps they can help him. I'm certain they can. And will, replied the Queen. Though just looking at the wounded wretch, she knew he'd expire before nightfall. God speed you on your journey. The Queen whistled, and her mare resumed its trot. Shall I send for a witcher, Your Grace? Caldwell asked. One of those freaks should make short work of the monster. Until we apprehend the bandits, I shan't allow a single soul to leave our company, even on such an important mission as finding a witcher. Meave replied. Any who did would be captured at once. But 
If fate brings us near Wetterton, perhaps we'll see to this monstrous Harridan ourselves. Your Grace, we've only just fought beasts and scarcely escaped with our lives. This she-beast will take a silver sword. Magic formula. Yet a dozen arbalists will have to suffice, the Queen said, calmly but firmly. And please, Caldwell, do stiffen your spine a bit. Now onward. Well folks, the game tutorial and the first little piece of walkthrough is over. Now the actual walkthrough begins and I will meet you very soon in the second episode. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our discord to always stay in touch. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.